everyone. Thank you for having me. My name is Angel Peterson and my pronouns are she, her. I work for the Penn State University Libraries as the Open Publishing Production Specialist. Thank you all for coming to my presentation, The Pittsburgh Novel and Interactive Bibliography, Three Years in the Making. Today, I want to talk about a publication that took three years to complete. I will talk about the origins of the publication, the tools we use to publish it, the dynamic searchable features of the bibliography, and then provide a demo at the end. But first, I feel it's important to acknowledge the lands that Penn State is situated upon. The Pennsylvania State University campuses are located on the original homelands of the Erie, Haudenosaunee, Seneca, Cayuga, Onondaga, Oneida, Mohawk, and Tuscarora, Lenape, Delaware Nation, Delaware Tribe, Stockbridge, Muncie, Monongahela, Shawnee, Absentee Eastern in Oklahoma, Susquehannock, and Wazaji Osage Nations. As a land-grant institution, we acknowledge and honor the traditional caretakers of these lands and strive to understand and model their responsible stewardship. We also acknowledge the longer history of these lands and our place in that history. Just a quick overview of our program, we have three full-time employees and three part-time employees. Ali Laird is our Open Publishing Program Coordinator, Corey Weatherington is our Open Education Infrastructure Specialist, and myself, who provides production support for our Drupal publications, our bibliographies, and monographs. We publish journals, monographs, bibliographies, and topical web portals, all open access for the Penn State and local PA community. In our program, we have 12 open access bibliographies with two more in production. In 2020, when I first joined, we only had seven. Bibliographies account for half of our services, and we have a great diversity in the subject areas of our bibliographies, mostly within humanities and social sciences. Now we're going to take a closer look at one of these bibliographies as a case study and walk you through the publication process from consultation to promotion. So this slide shows the landing page for the Pittsburgh novel, Western Pennsylvania in Fiction and Drama, 1792 to 2022. It contains some text about the site, links at the top and the left-hand side for various supplemental pages and graphics. This publication came to us in late 2019, before I started working in the program. This publication started out as a project for Peter Orizic, a Pennsylvania native who had been compiling lists of novels that took place in Pittsburgh or Western Pennsylvania. And before he passed away, Peter had been co corresponding with Stephen Herb, the director of the PA Center for the Book at Penn State. They discussed publishing it as a print book with the Penn State Press. However, it was decided that digital publishing was the way to go. And Jake, his son, approached our program for publishing. So we started consulting with Jake. We provided guidance on information to include, how things can be designed and laid out, and then some of the search features that we could provide. And we're going to discuss those shortly. Initially, this bibliography was only supposed to go through 2014, but we decided to add some more titles to make it a more robust list of works set in Western PA, and we wanted to include some newer titles that came out after 2014. Jake then spent the majority of 2020 adding the titles and their corresponding content into Word documents. Each document was a decade's worth of titles. We spent the summer of 2021, myself, Jake, Allie, and our then student employee, Georgia, transcribing content from those Word documents to the spreadsheet with each row designated for a title. I created a punch list of things to clean up and be consistent with in the spreadsheet, including keeping book publisher content consistent, for example. One of the records he had Zumaya publications and the other just Zumaya. We spent um, time going through the abstracts and other text heavy fields to ensure that we were adding proper HTML markup for things that would need to be in it italics or bold. We made sure that information across the different content types was consistent. Once I confirmed that the Excel file was accurate and consistent, I converted it into multiple XML files for a faster upload and uploaded them into our Drupal site using the Biblio module. We then did some quality assurance within the site itself. And on the slide is a sample record for a man called Otto. This content is in table format and has various fields of data. One of the complications to this bibliography that we needed to resolve 
was how to create multiple search elements to it. The Biblio module within Drupal had a field for keywords, but we had two other content types that we wanted to use, genre and places. We decided to keep the keywords field for keywords, and we did a lot of keyword cleanup, making sure we reviewed them with DEI in mind, consolidating similar keywords, et cetera. After our former student, uh, Georgia, graduated, we hired another, Anish, and he helped a great deal in cleaning up these keywords. One other search feature was genre. Each title was categorized into different genres. And when we were looking at them, again, we took into consideration DEI and proper organization. We then used the taxonomy taxonomy module to tag each record with their respective genre. A taxonomy is a way to organize and lay out your content. It's a searchable, taggable field found under the search box under term and then on the left hand side of the publication. And if you click on any of those terms, it'll display all of the titles tagged with that taxonomy. So on the right hand side of the slide is a sample list of titles with comedy as the genre, including A Man Called Otto, Anything's Possible, and Ride the Wild Pony and other stories from 57 Steuben Street, a children's book for grown-ups. Another key element to the publication is place settings. Each title had various places tied to it, and in each record we have a nested places list. Each of the places in that record are places exclusive to that title, so it starts up at the county level and drills down into landmarks. And again, when you click on any one of those place settings, you'll see a full list of titles tied to those places. On the left-hand side of the screen, you can see the nested places list for lie down with dogs. Additionally, we have a full page places list, and that's on the right. For this, we also use the taxonomy module. Each place had to be manually added and created as a taxonomy in the website. We then had the developers use the feeds import module to tag all of those records with those taxonomies. Um, in order to get us ready for tagging, we had to make sure each place matched exactly. And because this bibliography was originally pulled together by Peter and Jake, they didn't always match. So for example, some titles would have, excuse me, some titles would have uh, Fort Redstone and others Redstone Old Forts. After pulling together a list of inconsistencies, we reached out to Jake and he advised on the better option. We then had to update the taxonomy in the website and in the spreadsheet. We hired a GIS student, James, to work on these places and the planning of an interactive map. And this took him an entire summer. So now that the places were all tagged and we had a complete and accurate places list in the spreadsheet, thanks to James, we enlisted the help of another student employee from our data learning center within the libraries to write a script using R to manipulate the data to create an interactive map. She and James worked together to ensure that the script accurately represented what we were looking for in the map. We then used ArcGIS for this map, and after consultations with our maps and GIS departments, we have an interactive map that allows our user to click on any region at the municipality, municipality level outside of Pittsburgh, and then at the neighborhood level for Pittsburgh proper, and it'll pull up a list of titles for that region. In the days before launching, we underwent a lot of testing, proofreading, editing and adding last minute titles. We also updated the supplemental pages that we have, including an introduction, acknowledgements, and about the authors. We did a lot of PR, working with our PR and marketing department, as well as Jake and his mother, Stephanie, to draft PR and distribute it to multiple newspapers across Pittsburgh and Western PA. As a, as a result of the PR and the publication itself, the Pittsburgh City Council declared January 31st, our launch date, as Peter Arizic Day and the Pittsburgh Novel Day. We have been receiving a lot of emails regarding titles that readers feel should be added to the bibliography. We have forwarded them all over to Jake and he is reviewing them and gathering more information. He's then going to provide us a list so we can update the site. Additionally, we will have to update the spreadsheet for that interactive map. We're also working on adding a tab at the top of the page so we can add blurbs or reviews or links to reviews just as a normal print book would have reviews on the back cover. And finally, the look and feel of the site is probably going to change depending on how the site will look when we migrate to Drupal 9. We're currently using Drupal 7 with that Biblio module. Drupal 9 does not support the Biblio module, so we're gonna have to import everything into Bibliography and Citations module, which is very similar. 
Um, and before we get to that slide with questions, let's take a look at the website. So um, this is the website for the Pittsburgh novel. Again, we have some titles or some links up here at the top of the page and over here on the left. Um, we also have this bibliography tab, and this is over 1,500 results. They're all organized by the publication year. Um, and if we click on A Man Called Otto, you can see we have, again, this table that is a part of the Biblio module. And we have various fields such as title, publication year, publication type, um, authors and keywords, abstract notes, which is a field that is added in by Jake. And it's just kind of additional comments and um, notes and things that he thought was important. We also have an author biography and a time uh, frame. And down here is where we have genre and places. And um, as you can see with places, we have Allegheny County. And then underneath Allegheny County, we'll have Sawicki Heights, Sawicki Cemetery, and then back under Pittsburgh. So basically, that just means that this title takes place in Pittsburgh, in the North Side neighborhood, in East Allegheny, which is a sub neighborhood of North Side, and then it maxes Allegheny Tavern. And if you click on any one of those, it'll go to that full list of all of the titles that are tied to that place. And then the same thing with genre, we have the comedy and literary. And so over here under search bibliography, we have various links here. So we have a link for authors, and this is the full authors list for any of the authors tied to this bibliography. We have keywords, which is also the full list of keywords for any of the ones that are tied to this bibliography. Um, and then places here. So this is the full list of places tied to the bibliography. It is a very lengthy page that's just scrolling about a quarter of the way through. Um, up at the top, we do have a lot of things of rivers, mountains, creeks, and things of that nature. We decided to keep them all at the same level as that county level and not try to nest them because mountains, rivers, and creeks tend to travel throughout the state and not necessarily within a county. And then we also have genres. So if I were to click on the comedy genre, you can see it brings up a list of all of the titles tied to it. And then if I were to go back to places and click on the places, we'll click on Allegheny County. It'll bring up that full list of titles. There's about 10 titles per page. And so for Allegheny County, it goes to, let's see, you know, just over 117 pages. So quite a lot of titles. And then finally, we have this interactive map. Um, the really cool thing about that is it is embedded within the site. You can also click on it to see it within ArcGIS. And in this map on the left hand side, it, as soon as it loads, are some directions on how to use the map. And so now every red bullet point within this map is at least one title. Um, if we were to scroll in outside of Pittsburgh, if we were to scroll into, um, let's scroll into Franklin Park here, because that's outside of Pittsburgh, and kind of just click around the red dot, it's going to pull up a list, and there's only six of titles that are in the municipality Franklin Park. And so you can see, we don't have the full bibliography over here, it's just really dealing with the places. We also have additional places that indicate that this title takes place in in uh, Pittsburgh, in Ohio Township, in uh, Butler County. And then it also has a link back to the bibliographic record. And if we zoom into Pittsburgh proper, you notice that the outlines are a little bit darker. That's just to indicate that, that those are the neighborhoods within Pittsburgh. And we click on, let's click on the Oakland neighborhood. And it's going to pull up the list again on that left-hand side. Um, oops, it's still loading. So there's 279 titles tied to the Oakland neighborhood. And again, same layout of the table over here. So just some really cool features to this bibliography that we all really like. Um, and yeah, so also in addition to that, over here on the home page, or on the introduction page rather, we have a download file that you can click on and download the entire data set if it's something of interest. So thank you all for coming to my presentation and please let me know if you have any questions.